How would you describe him? Um, well, Eisenheim's a mystery, you know, that's, that's kind of what I thought was compelling about him is that he's, um, there's a, there's a, he has a very intense surface presentation, uh, but you, you really can't read what's going on inside the person, even in the face of his own success or um, uh, other people's responses to him. He's, he keeps his cards very tight to his chest. And, um, and only, only as we move deeper and deeper into the film do you start to get a sense of what the things are that actually move him or motivate him. And, and I, I like that. I like the idea of, of, uh, of his character's inside being very, very slowly revealed. Um, so he's, you know, he's, a, he's kind of a, he's a mysterious, it's kind of like the stranger walks into town, you know, he's like this dark, mysterious figure who kind of captivates everybody's imagination and yet they know nothing about him. Um, and I thought that was interesting. I, I was not before they sent me the script. My two, two friends of mine who wrote the film Rounders were friends of Neil's and were producing this for him and they gave it to me as a script first. So uh, I had not, the story's by um, Stephen Milhauser, uh, but I, I had not read that before uh, I read the script. Um, well, you know, it, it was different. It was very different than things I'd done before, which sometimes is, uh, sometimes that's enough to me, uh, the, a, a fresh experience. Or, um, but I, you know, obviously you need to like where the story goes. Um, in Neil's original script, it, it hewed much more closely to the, to the story itself. It ended exactly like the story does over, over a period of time talking with me and our producers, he kept, it kept evolving and he changed it a good bit, um, which, uh, um, and, I, and eventually I think we all felt that it had, it had reached, it, it was a really good thriller. He had, it had turned into something with a really good twist at the ending and, and um, I think it, fu it was ready to function as a film. And, and at that point it was sort of like, um, you know, I liked, I just liked the idea of exploring the period exploring the challenge of presenting the magic um, in a convincing way, all of that was compelling. Well, the, I mean, in some sense, the, the story is anchored by the question of like, what is real, you know? And, and um, in the beginning, his presentations are so intense and convincing that what he gets other people questioning the, what, what they've actually seen, whether they've seen something that's just a fantastic trick or whether what they've seen is maybe almost mystical, and um, and that, but that starts to reverberate throughout the story as as you start to, you know, he starts wondering what his own, are his own feelings real, you know, and and you start and that and and what is truth and illusion starts to become kind of the whole experience of the film. Well, fortunately, we had. Um, you know, if I was left to figure this all out on my own, it would have been dead. So, um, I mean, there are some great histories, written histories of magicians from that era. There's a book called uh, Hiding the Elephant that's really interesting history of people all across that era. Um, there's the autobiography of Robert Houdin, which is also a great 19th century magician's biography. Um, but, uh, but fortunately, we had some of the greatest magicians alive um, uh, advising us, in particular Ricky Jay, who is uh, not only a great practitioner of magic but an illusion, but, uh, but a true scholar, like, like I think the acknowledged leading scholar on the history of, of stage illusionists and, um, and magic uh, culture and, and performance history, and he He's just a walking, he's literally like a walking encyclopedia uh, of, of all of it. And, for, and he, he was the key to the whole thing for me because, and I think for Neil as well, because my, um, Ricky and his partner, Michael, really, um, really put every illusion in the film to test and scrapped some and helped us redesign others that were appropriate to the 19th century period and then really worked through them with me to understand the mechanisms of them and most important to work on the presentation make sure that the presentation of these illusions was convincing and fluid and um, and I, I just 
I, I, I really owe the half the performance to those guys tutoring. Paul's, uh, Paul's just an amazing actor. He, um, <laughs> if there's anything challenging about Paul, it's that Paul, Paul can do things so many different ways. He's so funny. He's, he can be scary. He can, I mean, and he can take something and he can take it and do it one way and then do it another way so fast that you can get disoriented. I mean, it's like, um, he's just incredibly versatile and um, it's so easy to work with someone like that. It's just, uh, it's, it's wonderful. I, I've admired his stuff since I was in college with him and, and I, um, I used to, I saw him when he was 20, 21 and he was great back then. And um, it was kind of exciting to finally hook up and do something with him. She was great. Um, Jessica, I think, was stepping into a, a tone or a, you know, a wavelength with the material that was very different from anything she had done, too. And, um, and I think some people were saying, you know, is, this, is she up to this with these people and everything? And she was fantastic. I mean, she just slipped right into it. I think she's got a very natural, she's very graceful. She's got a very natural poise. Um, and uh, uh, she just, the way that people, the, com the composition that people held themselves with, uh, you know, the formality of the language and things, she just, she just slipped right into it. Um, and she's very, she's, she's got a real, she's very, she's very graceful and she's got a great restraint and a lot, a lot of a sense of inner feeling um, going on behind what she's saying, and that I thought that was so key because these were people in that era. They were so they they couldn't wear their emotions. They couldn't express everything the way we can today. And so, a great deal had to be sort of tamped down and behind. And so you need to feel it behind the surfaces in this film. And um, that that that's a very challenging thing to do. And I, th I thought she was great. I had a great, very easygoing rapport with her. Yeah. She's very beautiful, so it's, it's not too tough. <laughs> um, well. We couldn't, we couldn't go to Vienna, really, so, um, I mean, the, because, I mean, the, the film takes place in Vienna, but, the, but Vienna has lost a lot of its historic streets and things like that, so, so we, we filmed it in Prague because, the, um, because Prague is just incredibly architecturally intact, so we, so we um, you know, you can point a camera down certain streets in Prague and you don't have to change a sign or anything, it's just amazing, and the, and the Czech countryside is, is also really beautiful, and, and actually just is in fact the old, I mean, it's all part of the old Austro-Hungarian Empire as well, so um, it was marvelous being over there. It's, it, the setting does, I mean, you go into one of those old theaters and like half the work is done, you know. Um, I, I think at its core it's a mystery, um, uh, you know, it's a, it's a romantic mystery, I guess, um, or, a, or a thriller, or a mystery thriller, or a romantic thriller, <laughs> I don't know, it's, um, you know, I, I, I always like, you know, I felt this, um, I felt this on certain films like Rounders, you know, uh, a Rounders is a, is a genre piece, it's about poker, it's about people taking risk, it's about people, you know, risking for their dreams. But really, at the end of the day, when I read that the Rounders, I remember thinking like, what was the last good poker movie I saw, the last good gambling movie that I can think of? And I, I really, you had to go back to like the Cincinnati Kid to even think of a movie that was about card players. And so I just thought, well, that's great, because I don't think anybody's seen that in a while. And I feel the same about this. It's like, I, I really can't think of the last good magician movie that I saw. I really, I really, I couldn't think of one. And I thought, I thought, well, that alone will be fresh, you know, a movie we haven't seen in a while. <laughs> so, um, so I think it's, I think it's, um, it, it's a, uh, it's a world and a and a set of storylines. I don't think people feel exciting to people. <laughs>